Friday is here. In fact, if you stand on your tiptoes, <clears throat> you can see the weekend. 19th day of February 2024. I am Dan Coots. Happy Friday. Five star shows. That's what we give you Fridays. <clears throat> you know the routine by now. Mondays and Tuesdays, we're here. We show up. We work. We don't work real hard. Uh, Wednesdays, you know, it's like Mondays and Tuesdays. Thursdays, we lean forward a little bit. Try and get put a little effort into some quality local television. And then on Friday, we deliver you a five-star show or double your television viewing pleasure back. It is snowing. As you can see, it's snowing lightly almost everywhere in our viewing area. It's 21 degrees. Got up this morning about 3.15. Wasn't really snowing much at all, but when I started heading down here to the office, it was snowing heavier, but not real heavy. And then it stopped, and then it started picking up again about a half an hour ago. And we're still, we still have that winter weather advisory. They've extended it until 3 o'clock this afternoon. But it looks like the worst is behind us as far as the snow is concerned. But we could get a little bit of everything this weekend. It's going to be a gradual warming trend. We got cold air down below. We got warmer air coming in up above it. That means we could have a lot of things. But a gradual, moderate warming trend is finally upon us. Your weekend weather forecast is uh, first on the agenda, followed by the news, followed by sports. Kraken uh, now have a three-game losing streak. That nine-game winning streak seems like a distant memory. Big, big victory for the Huskies last night down in Berkeley. Cougars won. Gonzaga men won. Gonzaga women won. We'll have the prep scoreboard, the prep schedule for this weekend. When we talk about sports in the back half of the program, Tony Sandoval will be my guest. He is the Washington Department of Veteran Affairs Staff Sergeant Parker Fox Suicide Prevention Grant Program Head. Tony Sandoval is a good friend of ours, and he has some important information for you folks. We had a chance to visit with Tony at the Vets Hall on North Wenatchee Avenue. We'll have that for you in the back half of the program. Don't miss that conversation uh, with one of the good guys, Tony Sandoval, two minutes after the hour. Here we go. It's cloudy, it's foggy, not a lot to see with our cameras. We have the Hay Camera Canyon to start our show. That is Jump Off Ridge. Most of what you see, or you can see anyway, is the Stenilk Basin uh, with the orchards just kind of sitting there and going, hmm, there's not a lot for orchards to do this time of the year. Good morning to the Stenilk Basin. A little bit of Malaga in there. Can't quite see the Wenatchee Valley. It is quite foggy and cloudy and misty. Camera number two, there's Hay Canyon. We started out the show with that. Good morning to Hay Canyon. Uh, that is, uh, that's up there a ways. That's, you can see pretty much all of Kashmir. There has been a lot of accidents. We, have, of course, have a scanner in the newsroom tuned into Rivercom. Something like five or six accidents from the time I get into the office this morning till about 6.45 this morning. A lot of people are slipping and sliding, especially on Highway 28 between East Wenatchee and Rock Island. They've had like three accidents out there, so just a heads up on that. Next on the agenda, I believe, is Leavenworth. Good morning to Leavenworth. Snowing there. That is our Tumwater Canyon camera pointed right down to the heart of downtown Leavenworth. You can make a little bit of that out. Snowing up there, no surprise. And we love Billy Goat. We love Billy Goat so much we're going to use it again. That's pretty cool. Hello, Pateras. Hello, Bridgeport. Well, you can't see Bridgeport, but we're saying hello to you anyway. And Brewster and all you good folks right now. OMAC, you're at 21 degrees. Wenatchee's 21. Ellsberg's 21. Moses Lake, 25. Quincy, 21 degrees. Everybody's hovering right around the same temperature. Check this little stat out, though. The last seven days, take a look at this. Check this out. The last seven days, our low temperature is the last seven days, minus 7, minus 10, minus 4, minus 2, 1, 11, and then 11 yesterday. Our high temperature, by the way, 21 degrees on Thursday was right before midnight, so we do have that moderate warming trend is already beginning. Here's your wintry mix through the rest of the week today or through the rest of the day today. Still another inch or so for the Wenatchee Valley. The upper elevations may be a couple more inches of light, fluffy snow. Again, we still have the winter weather advisory. It doesn't expire until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And we still cannot rule out freezing rain. Now, it hasn't happened yet in the Wenatchee Valley, but you got warm air up aloft, and it's packing some moisture to it. It falls as rain, and it pa passes through the cold pocket of air near the Earth's surface. It freezes and hits the ground as freezing rain and possibly sleep. It is a possibility early this morning and then again in the early evening hours. In the middle of the day, probably not, but take a look uh, of where you live. And it looks like the passes aren't going to be particularly pleasant again. It hasn't been good driving weather in the Cascades for about, I don't know, eight days now. Anyway, we wanted to show you those slides just so you were in on the loop. 
from the National Weather Service. That way, if you don't like the weather, you can blame the government. Snow. Until about the time the show's over, about 8, 30, the snow should be tapering off about then. We'll get up to 28 degrees, which is going to feel downright balmy, considering what we've had. And then the weather is going to be kind of boring tonight and Saturday and Saturday night. Just clouds, no precipitation. 26 for the overnight low, 33 Saturday. Clouds dry. Saturday night, clouds, no precipitation. 32. Yeah, you see that temperature variation. 33 for the high on Saturday, 32 for the overnight low Saturday night. Sunday, eh, 40% chance of precipitation. Snow level is going to be at 2,800 feet, so we're looking at probably rain, maybe a little bit of light snow. High of 36 on Sunday. Sunday night, snow level drops down to a couple hundred feet, uh, about 2,300 feet will be the snow level on Sunday night. So something perhaps. 33 for the overnight low. Monday, we warm up to 37. That's going to feel good. Snow level 3,300 feet on Monday. 33 for the overnight low Monday night, so we'll see some snow melt in the evening hours. And 42, <clears throat> bring it on on Tuesday. So get ready for some significant snow melt. Really going to get going on Sunday with that high of 36. And on Monday, and finally Tuesday up into the 40s with a chance of rain and not snow. That's your forecast at six minutes after the hour. You want to know what's going on in the Wenatchee Valley and north central Washington? We will fill that need for you next with the news. You're watching Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. When your heating or cooling system is giving you trouble, call the Diagnostic Doctor from Dick Seating and Air Conditioning. <laughs> Here's the culprit right here. All joking aside, when you call Dix, you're calling 35 years of experience at customer service right here in the Wenatchee Valley. Dix strongly believes in repairing before replacing and they service all major brands of HVAC units. Hey, welcome back to Save Mart. What can we help you find today? Uh, we're looking for a mattress. Oh, right this way, we got a large selection. We have this pillow top here. Oh, comfortable. We have more to choose from down here. Oh. I think I have the perfect one over here for you. I guess we'll take this one. You find it at Saver. Full service at a low, low price. Check out clubprocashmere.com for upcoming events and tickets. The newest generation of GMC Sierra pickups offer the most advanced technology, the strongest selection of powertrain, and everything else you need to work hard, play hard, and explore the boundaries of the Wenatchee Valley and beyond. Take a look at the latest, most luxurious and durable trucks on the market. You will see why GMC is not your grandfather's pickup. You want to bet, kid? Snowy lightly here in the Menanche Valley, 21 degrees. The snow should be tapering off by mid-morning anyway, and then we gradually warm up. Snow in the upper elevations, rain down here. We'll be in the lower 40s by the early part of next week. It's nine minutes after the hour. A major structure fire yesterday morning destroyed a home in Rock Island that had been slated for demolition. Now, the city of Rock Island owns the structure, 1450 Douglas Street. That's where the fire was reported about 8.50 yesterday morning. Four Wenatchee Valley Fire Department engine crews arrived, but Deputy Chief Andrew Davidson said they couldn't quickly access the most involved portion of the building because it was structurally unsound and littered with refuse left by squatters. Court records show the city acquired the property last fall, recently won a court order to evict the people who are living in there illegally. Firefighters did not find anyone inside the home. Nobody was injured. Davidson said because the house was due to come down and there were no risks to any occupants because there's nobody in there, crews simply monitored the fire and protected nearby property and let the fire burn the building down. The cause of the blaze is under investigation. A man accused of fleeing when Angie police during a traffic stop uh, earlier in the week is now facing charges of fleeing police. 
during a traffic stop in nine gross misdemeanors and 10 felonies. 31-year-old Drake Morris Evans McGee of Tacoma, he was arrested on January 6th after allegedly speeding away from a DUI traffic stop. After he was arrested, police say they found an illicit handgun, as well as purses, identifications, and credit cards taken in a series of recent vehicle prowls. Evans McGee was arraigned Wednesday in Chelan County Superior Court on felonies, including unlawful firearm possession, eluding police, and eight counts of second-degree theft. He faces trial early in March. The man who robbed uh, East Wenatchee Motel last summer has pled guilty to that case. He faces 51 months in, in prison. Eric John Felton, he entered the Caesar Cedars Inn Hotel early on July 7th, threatened the front desk employee, demanded money, left on foot, he didn't get anything. But a couple of weeks later, he returned and took cash from the cash register in the lobby while the front desk was unattended. The theft was caught on video. East Wenatchee Police publishing images from the video in an effort to locate Felton. They found him three days later. He entered a plea Tuesday to second-degree burglary with Douglas County prosecutors agreeing to drop related charges. The State House of Representatives yesterday was set to take up a measure sponsored by State Representative Keith Gaynor. House Bill 1468 is what it's called. It was first introduced last year. <clears throat> it would soften the effect of impact fees, which are imposed locally when new construction takes place. If the bill passes, it would make it easier to defer those fees without the need to place a lien against the new construction. The bill has bipartisan support. Gaynor and others testified last year that the goal is to make it more affordable for builders to build new houses. The city of Rock Island wants to expand its urban growth area and is asking property owners in the proposed urban growth area to think about rezoning their land. The UGA is the region that's set aside for potential new development that will eventually be, be annexed into the adjacent city. In a letter earlier this month to Landover, landowners, Rock Island Mayor Randy Agnew said the town is running out of space in its current urban growth area thanks to new home building. Agnew says the new growth will likely occur in areas currently zoned as agricultural resource land his letter asks owners to inquire with Douglas County about different zoning that would allow more dense residential development. Rock Island's population has grown about 20% over the last three years. And finally, Chelan County is partnering once again with local community organizations. They do it every year. About this time, it's the annual Homeless Point in Time Count. It's going to be held next Thursday. It happens every year. The Department of Housing and Urban Development and the Washington State Commerce they survey the homeless population to identify the needs for local housing and local resources. The survey collects information about each individual's living situation as well as general demographic data. The survey will take place next Thursday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Lighthouse Christian Ministries. Various nonprofits will also venture out into the streets to provide resources for those without homes. That's the news at 14 minutes. After the hour. The news with Grant and Eric tonight at 5, 6, and 10. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 10 o'clock on TV. If you want to watch it on the internet, by golly, if you have the internet, and pretty sure you do, we'll have the news up and running on our homepage, ncwlife.com, on our Facebook page, on our YouTube page, and on our app. So you can watch it on TV or watch it on the internet. The evening news at 5, 6, and 10, and wherever you want to, right around 5 o'clock. That is how you download the app. There's your QR code. Hold your camera up. And you're good to go. And if you have a news tip, send it to us. News at ncwlife.com. Fridays this time of year means a lot of sports. And by golly, we have a lot of sports. It's next. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. Global Car Care has the best customer service in the Valley. From the moment you walk in the door, their goal is to help you stay on the road so you can keep doing what's important to you. Global Car Care certified ASE mechanics stand behind your automotive repairs.
16 minutes after the hour, the Seattle Kraken took an early 2 to nothing lead over Edmonton, but Edmonton poured in four consecutive goals and the Oilers extending their franchise record winning streak. They've won 12 games in a row now. They beat the Kraken last night in Edmonton. The final was 4-2. to He's in to the outside of Wenberg, a pirouette. He lost the puck. York Strand, a breakaway. Kelly Tobin in. In alone. He scores! To the roof from Ellie Tobin in. 10-11 left to go in the opening period. The Kraken off and running. One and going against Wenberg. Gets a little bit of help there by Bjorkstrand on the back. Check. You never want to see a forward skating backwards against McDavid, but that turns the other way. You get a breakaway from Ellie Tolvin and just a quick snap up over the glove hand of Skinner. But Vander Kane out in front off a defensive stick. Went off McCann and now Gord back out to center. He'll sing a pass for Eberly for McCann and he scores. That's hockey, baby. Jared McCann with goals in back-to-back -back games. A beautiful play. Two on ones all over the ice. Good rush here. Yanni Gord's going to send this puck over Everly through the triangle of Nurse, and it's McCann going in this time alone. A little short ice break here, and he tries on Dreisaitl through the center zone. Double team. Tolvanen and Alexiak. Dreisaitl swings it off the stick, and they score. It's Warren Fogel who was in the right place at the right time. 37 seconds gone in the second period. Edmonton cuts the lead in half. Face off possessed by Edmonton Bouchard. For the wall, Nugent Hopkins. Evan Bouchard, play catch. For the goal line, Tricycle in front. The court said no, and they score. On the rebound, it's Leon Tricycle. Edmonton circles back defensively. Back home for Kane, Evander Kane, skate the stick, and now a spring pass, Dreisaitl, Fogel scores! Warren Fogel on a beautiful play. Kane to Dreisaitl to Fogel. Edmonton with a 3-2 lead. Seattle's uh, six-game road trip comes to an end, uh, season long, I should say. They finished 3-3, three and three, and they welcome the Maple Leafs into town to climb the Pledge Arena Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. All right, men's college basketball scoreboard. The Washington Huskies blew an 11-point second-half lead, but they sank two three-pointers in the closing seconds. They pulled out the victory 77-75 to over Cal. Here is how it ended. Wheeler driving the action. Johnson to the corner. Holland a clean look. Wow. Huge for the Huskies. Got to get it in. Wheeler out to Brooks. To the corner. Wood to the left. Elsewhere, Gonzaga coach Mark Few notched his career win number 700. The Bulldogs used a 23-3 run in the second half to pull away from Pepperdine, 86-61. And Miles Rice had a career-high 35 points to lead the Cougar men to a decisive 89-75 win over Stanford last night. The Cougs have now won three in a row. Can't forget about the ladies. Number 17, Gonzaga, victorious. Yvonne Jim, 24 points, 12 rebounds. Number 17, Gonzaga handled, handled uh, Coach Lisa Fortier, her 250th career win with a 72-48 win over Loyola Marymount last night in Los Angeles. The Bulldogs are at St. Mary's on Saturday. Despite the weather, they did get some basketball in yesterday to the Les Schwab Prep Basketball scoreboard we go in girls action. Cashmere all over OMAC. 52 to 10. It was Chelan, no problems with Quincy, 40 to 32. Antioch knocked, knocked off Cascade Christian Academy, 65 to 19. And Pateras over Soap Lake, 60 to 32. In the Les Schwab Prep Boys basketball scoreboard from yesterday, Quincy got the better of Cashmere, 70 to 63. It was, uh, I'm sorry, OMAC over Cashmere, 70 to 63. Quincy beat Chelan, 68 to 53. Antioch over Cascade Christian Academy by four. And Soap Lake beat Pateras in a high scoring game. They're supposed to wrestle. They didn't. <clears throat> all the wrestling matches with their local teams, all of them postponed. Eisenhower couldn't make it up from Yakima to take on Eastmont when Angie was supposed to go down to Sunnyside. They had a ton of snow. Davis couldn't make it out of Yakima to make it up to Moses Lake. So all of the prep wrestling with the local big schools did not wrestle yesterday. When they get rescheduled, we will be sure to let you know. Now, weather may play a role in tonight's games. We shall see. They're going to decide whether West Valley is going to make the trip up from Yakima 
this morning, uh, as it is right now, it is scheduled in girls basketball, the Rams and the Panthers at 530. We will have that game for you if they play it on uh, NCW Life. Uh, we got Moses Lake at Davis at 530 in big night action and the Eisenhower ladies are at Sunnyside at 530. And Ellensburg tries to keep their unbelievable winning streak alive. They'll be at Sela at 5.30. Six o'clock games tonight for the ladies. Bridgeport at Okanagan, Liberty Bell at Brewster, Orville at Tenasket, and Manson is at Lake Roosevelt, and they'll tip off at 7.30, Waterville Mansfield at Pateras. That's the girls. Tonight for the boys, again, West Valley is scheduled to take on Wenatchee if they do make the trip. We will have that for you on the NCAA Life channel. Eric Ranson with the call at 7 o'clock. We shall see. Moses Lake will be at Davis at 7 o'clock, Eisenhower at Sunnyside, Ellensburg Boys at Sela, Bridgeport Boys at Okanagan at 7.30. Also at 7.30, it's Liberty Bell at Brewster, Orville and Tenasket, and Manson will tip off against Lake Roosevelt. Tomorrow, your girls' schedule, Davis will be at Eastmont at 4.30. I think by tomorrow, the roads will be fine for Davis to make the trip, so look for that. If you can't make it to the Eastmont Gymnasium, you can watch it on the NCAA Life Channel with Grant Olson. Renate, you'll be at Moses Lake at 4.30 and Sunnyside at West Valley, 3.30 tip-off for Afreda at East Valley tomorrow. The smaller schools, you got Prosser at Ellensburg at 3.30. Liberty Bell girls will take on Cascade at 4.30. It's Brewster at Liberty Spangle at 4 at 6 o'clock, Waterville Mansfield at Soap Lake, and at 4.30, Okanagan and Davenport girls will tip off tomorrow. Boys basketball, we will have it for you here again. Pretty sure this one's going to happen. Davis at Eastmont at 6 o'clock again on the NCW Life Channel. When Edge, you'll be at Moses Lake at 6, Sunnyside at West Valley, and Afreda at East Valley uh, tomorrow afternoon. Smaller schools tomorrow, check it out if you want to. See some good basketball. Prosser at Ellensburg at 5 o'clock. The Liberty Bell Boys at Cascade at 6. Brewster will be at Liberty Spangle at 5.30. They'll tip off at 7.30. The Waterville Mansfield Boys in Soap Lake and Okanagan and Davenport at 6 o'clock. TV tomorrow. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, I, like I said, I think this game is going to come off. Tonight's Wenatchee West Valley game, that's kind of iffy. As soon as they make a decision, we'll let you know. In the meantime, we are good to go, I think, tomorrow for a doubleheader. Girls at 4.30, boys at 6. Grand Olson with the call. The Davis Pirates, the Eastmont Wildcats, right here on the NCW Life Channel. Can't forget our friends about the Wenatchee Wild. They have a busy weekend. Tomorrow is Guns and Hoses Night. I don't know if there's tickets available. You'll have to find out. It's usually a big one. Spokane's in town to take on the Wild. That's tomorrow at 6 o'clock at the Town Toyota Center. Then they're on the road in Kent to take on the Thunderbirds at 5.05 on Sunday. And you can wrap up your weekend. Oh, let me tell you about the football. By the time Sunday night rolls around, we'll be down to four. It's the divisional playoffs. They'll get going tomorrow. Houston and Baltimore at 1.30. They'll be both on ESPN and ABC and Fox. We'll have Green Bay and San Francisco at 5.15. NBC has the noon kickoff. Tampa Bay at Detroit. That place will be rocking noon at NBC. And then uh, to wrap it up on CBS, the Chiefs in Buffalo at 3.30. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Friday, the 19th day of January. Happy National Popcorn Day. <clears throat> Did a little research. Nobody knows really who invented National Popcorn Day, but it's, they, they think sometime in the late 70s, early 80s, probably centered around the Super Bowl, because the Super Bowl used to be played in mid-January. It isn't anymore in any event, um, because people associate, well, watching football on your couch, drinking beer, and eating popcorn. Fun facts about popcorn, the odds are pretty good. If you're eating popcorn today, it came from Nebraska. One-fourth of all the popcorn produced in this country is grown in Nebraska. That comes out to 250 million pounds of popcorn just from Nebraska. Americans eat about 17 billion quarts of popcorn every year. That would fill the Empire State Building 18 times. We love our popcorn. Unpopped popcorn should not be stored in the refrigerator. Not a good idea. The refrigerator will dry out the moisture in the kernels and the kernels need moisture to pop. You store it in a cool, dry, room temperature cupboard. That's how you want to store your popcorn. Don't store it in the fridge. Approximately 70% of all the popcorn eaten in America is eaten at home. You make it at home, you pop on a movie, you eat the popcorn, the other 30% sporting events, motion pictures, what have you, schools, things like that. Popcorn was very popular during the Great Depression. It was only like a nickel or a dime for a bag of popcorn. Wasn't necessarily nutritious, but you could certainly afford it. So popcorn enjoyed great popularity during the Great Depression because people could actually eat it. 
The ideal popping temperature for popping popcorn between 400 to 460 degrees Fahrenheit. The average kernel will pop at about 347 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's in a larger kernel, it takes a little bit hotter temperature. Enjoy popcorn, salt and butter, lots of it. Bring it on, baby. And you get those little in your teeth. 27 minutes after the hour. Today in history, when the Lodes ghetto, when they took all the Polish Jews and stuck them in the Lodes ghetto in 1939, there were 250,000 of them living in the most awful, god-awful, squalid conditions you could ever imagine. Well, on January 19th, 1945, the Soviet Union invaded and liberated the Lodes ghetto in Nazi-occupied Poland. Again, 250,000 Polish Jews in the ghetto in 1939 on this date in 1945 when the Soviet tanks rolled in and liberated the Lodz ghetto. There were 877 left. 71 years ago today, the episode of I Love Lucy was filmed in Hollywood back on November 14th of 1952, but on January 19th of 1953, 71 years ago today, all of America, 74% of all television sets were tuned in to I Love Lucy as Lucille Ball gives birth on television to her son, Desi Jr., 12 hours before the episode aired across the country, Lucille Ball gave birth to Desi Arnaz via C-section. He was born 12 hours earlier, he was in the news, and then you could watch the episode when Lucy gives birth that very night. 44 million people watch that on TV, and you can watch it right now if you want, but don't change the channel. This is the 50th anniversary of one of the dumber naval engagements everywhere. It's a piece of real estate. <clears throat> We've had a lot of wars over pieces of land that nobody wants. For instance, the Paracel Islands. The Paracel Islands is about 130 islands, 130 islands in the South China Sea. Total land of all 130 islands is about three square miles. <clears throat> and they went to war over it. China gains control over the Paracel Islands on the state 50 years ago today, 1974. There was a naval engagement between the China, Chinese Navy and the South Vietnamese Navy. China won. Now, South Vietnam, Taiwan, and China all claim the Paracel Islands. China actually controls the Paracel Islands. 130 islands, three square miles, nobody lives there. It's birds and turtles. And that's it. Well, I suppose you can have it, China. And 43 years ago today, January 19th, 1981, Jimmy Carter, after months of intense negotiations, they signed the deal, the hostages will be coming home. After 444 days, they signed the agreement, all 52 American hostages would be freed. The terms were this, the U.S. would not intervene politically or militarily in Iranian affairs. Okay, well, whatever. The U.S. would remove the freeze that they held on all Iranian assets. Both countries would stop suing each other. There was litigation between the two countries in international courts. They would ditch all of those, and Iran agreed to pay back all of the debts that they had incurred to the United States and the United States banks. They would pay it all back. Deal's done. Hostages are coming home in 81. And finally, at the bottom of the hour, Birthdays, my three favorite short story writers, Edgar Allan and Poe. They all celebrate their birthday today. He was born in Baltimore on this date in 1809, died in Baltimore in 1849 at the age of 40. Critic, poet, writer, it's all good. Edgar Allan Poe, one of the legendary literary figures in this country's history, lived a tragic life. Speaking of tragic lives, Janis Joplin, she would be 81 years old today. Janis Joplin was not destined to live to be 81. She's a member of the 27 Club, died of a drug overdose in 1970 at the age of 27. She's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mike Mignotti is smiling right now. He's the biggest Janis Joplin fan I know, and the music's good. That helps. Dolly Parton is 78. Country Music Hall of Fame last year inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 25 songs on number one on the Billboard Country Charts that ties with Reba McIntyre for the most number one songs 
among female artists, and she has 44 career top 10 country albums. That's the best of all time. Happy 78th, Dolly. And my favorite South Korean pole vaulter, the great South Korean pole vaulter from Olympic fame. Happy 42nd birthday to Kim Yusak. Kim Yusak is 42 years old today. Mike McNaughty's got an opinion. That's coming up. Also, my conversation with Tony Sandoval. You like Tony. I like Tony. Very important information for you veterans out there from a guy who knows what he's talking about. And a special thanks to Alpine Air. For heat and air, call Alpine Air. They are platinum sponsors here on the NCW Life Channel. And you're watching a Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. A ductless unit from Carrier can keep anyone comfortable. Take Shelly, for instance. She finds me time in her new attic tur turned home gym. And with her Carrier ductless unit, the temperature is always perfect, no matter how intense her workout gets. Carrier, total comfort, totally happy. Turn to the experts, Carrier and, and Alpine Air. Heat and air, call Alpine Air. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. Are you dealing with a pest or weed issue and you just don't know what to do? We use the best pest control methods approved for areas with kids and pets. Whether it's rats, mice, ants, or spiders, or something else altogether. We provide the coaching and solutions you're looking for. And you can know that your dollars are supporting a local, family-owned and operated business. Allow us to help you get back to living healthy and pest-free. Harvest Valley Pest Control. Your home runs on hot water. From the kitchen, to the bath, to the laundry. So Rheem offers a wide variety of water heaters from traditional models to ones smart enough to tell you how much hot water is available. On second thought, perhaps the laundry can wait. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Protect your family and save money with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to Guardian Services from Localtel. Call Guardian Security from Localtel now or visit localtel.net to learn more. Hey, this is Mike, Mad Dog Magnotti, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, my daughter, son-in-law, and grandchild Luca were coming over for dinner the other night. And I was going to cook salmon. So the day before they came, I told Luca, I said, we're having salmon. And Luca looked at me and he said, I'm allergic to salmon. Well, of course, meaning that he doesn't like salmon. Well, doggone it, in my day, the way I was raised, no one cared whether or not you liked something. You ate what was put in front of you. And you either ate it or you went hungry. Nobody put up with your culinary likes and dislikes. So remembering what I've been taught, I have of course, made the kids some Italian sausage, <laughs> which I know he loves. <laughs> hey, I'm his grandfather. I'm not his warden. <laughs> this is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Crown Furniture knows the most important part of a healthy and productive lifestyle is good quality sleep. The Englander Mattress Company is dedicated to manufacturing the best mattresses made in the USA. Englander chooses the finest materials made in the USA with a drive, dedication, and attention to detail, earning them a 99% satisfaction rating. Stop by Crown Furniture today on South Wenatchee Avenue and save up to 35% on select Englander mattresses.
In today's environment, risk management assessment is a crucial process for your business. Risk assessment will identify, evaluate, and mitigate hazards. Don't let risk impact your business income, reputation, operations, and your overall success. We can give you peace of mind by transferring your business risks to the insurance providers. Call Stacy at August Edge Insurance today to schedule a risk management assessment for your business. In Digital Media Arts Program, we learn about video production gear and editing by the combination of class projects and nonprofit work and employment. It makes things happen. Yeah. It's pretty magical. We work in the industry at the Wenatchee Road, NCW Life Channel, and the Town Toyota Center event. Every day we work with industry standard equipment for a hands on learning experience. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, family owned and operated on North Wenatchee Avenue, right next to Hooked on Toys. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue uses only fresh ingredients handcrafted with love, including authentic Hawaiian barbecue and Japanese style ramen noodle soups. And the bubble teas will keep you coming back for more. Enjoy the culinary tour of the Pacific Rim with Hawaiian barbecue lunches and combo plate classics, as well as ramen noodle soups. Tiki Hawaiian Barbecue, enjoy their comfort food like you're one of the family. Welcome back to the program. Uh, if you watched just a few days ago, you got to meet uh, Jim Cook, a United States Army veteran who found a new job at Alathena Riding Center, knew nothing of horses, didn't know horses from a kumquat, <laughs> and found himself in a really happy position. Uh, at the same time, we were supposed to interview our good buddy here, Tony Sandoval. <laughs> Technical difficulties, please stand by. So we've decided to come down here to the Vets Hall on North Wenatchee Avenue to catch up with uh, Tony Sandoval, who has a new title from the last time you and I visited late summer. Um, Talk about, talk about the new job, how the job was created, and your transition to what you're doing now. It's a, it's a pretty interesting story. Right, so the Staff Sergeant Parker Fox uh, Suicide Prevention Grant Program, which is a whole lot of letters, is actually a, a national grant that the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs picked up, and essentially they've, they, they isolated and decided on a few counties that were really struggling to make connection with the VA. So they decided Chelan, Douglas, uh, Kittitas, and Grant counties needed some additional support in suicide prevention and the whole basis of it is to make community connections and um, to connect more veterans to health care statistically more veterans plugged into VA health care less suicidality and and that's that's what we're the, the end game is how did they do the, the state VA crunch the numbers and said this area here specifically needs mm. this help more than say others I mean how do they how did you guys end up on their radar? So I got a, a, a combat vet friend, uh, Eric Burns, who's the program manager in, in Olympia, and he's a, he's a data uh, guru. And he just did all the metrics, uh, crunched all the numbers, and said, hey, these counties are a little bit underserved, and this is the way we're going to go. So as the program manager, he also, uh, there's a the spot on the west side of the mountains with a couple counties that also runs the same uh, Staff Sergeant Fox program. And so, and, and we, feel like, uh, we feel like we've been able to get on the ground and, and make some more community connections and, and build up uh, a better network um, of, of prevention. Is it, are rural counties underserved by VA organizations as opposed to urban counties just because there's just less people so they have a tendency to slip through the cracks or? You know, kind of uh, looking through the data specifically on the website, you can see that King County has 100,000 veterans. So why on earth would Chelan County with 4,500 veterans really get the nod uh, for more services when you're serving you know, 20 times as much in another county specific. So it is difficult to say, but uh, but but by the definition, rural healthcare is incredibly difficult, not only for veterans, but civilians as well. And so um, programs like this say, hey, we're, we might not be doing this all, um, but we want to help with the VA. So let's get somebody on the ground to start making these sorts of connections. with. And that's VA. what you're doing? Yes, sir. 
That's what you're, you sent me some numbers, yeah. pretty, pretty startling numbers. Fiscal year 2022, 4,547 veterans living in Chelan County, 31% mm -hmm. of them enrolled in the federal VA healthcare system. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. seems low. Mm -hmm. You would think they all would. Right, right. And there's that's dynamic of, of people that think that every veteran should just, they should automatically be in the VA healthcare. And, and so, and, and what I say is essentially if it's necessary, if they need it, if they meet the criteria, they can access that thing. And so, yeah, it is a little bit low, but the reality is, um, you know, as we continue to work with VA, we really have to have the numbers and show the metrics prior to having them build something for us. So we're, we're trying to get more people involved, but the reality is the structure can't really hold it as well. So it, it's really difficult than the, than the pressure of uh, the computer program out of Spokane, the Cerner program, and then COVID. And so I really feel like we're building something that's gonna be longstanding now. Do, do, are there some veterans out there who just don't want anything to do with the VA because they associate it with their service to our country and maybe their service didn't go so well and so they right. just kind of want to just right. not, it reminds them of, a, of right. maybe a, a difficult time in their lives? A hundred percent. And I listened to a story yesterday about a Vietnam veteran who was very much that way. Um, the don't ask, don't tell when people were getting kicked out, things like this. I mean, that population of folks was just really, they just stayed off the radar. And that VA that was 20, 30, 50 years old, is, it's gone. And we have some real professionals, especially on our Wenatchee VA, CBOC, the clinic here, um, that are doing tremendous amounts for their veterans with a passionate heart. So they've really done a ton. Suicide prevention, mm -hmm. that's a, th those two words are, they don't necessarily right. go together, right. do they? How, do, how does one prevent suicide? Right. It's, it's, right. It's, a, it's an unknowable quantity and yet you're out there trying. How do, you, how do you know you're getting there and how do people end up on your radar to begin with? Right, you know, um, this is uh, something that, um, you know, I deal with on a daily basis is my, my wife, uh, Jerry, her, her last husband uh, died by suicide. And so when I go home every night and I see my, my beautiful little girls, they, I know that they struggle with this. And so, and that's why I know I'm in the right spot because I know that some of my buddies took their life, um, just so many, American soldiers have taken their life and they say, um, you know, anything that we can do to alleviate a pressure or to help work with somebody or to empower them to be able to handle some of the stresses that uh, uh, to, uh, coping or anything else is a step forward for us. And I think that when we look at our numbers, um, you know, getting people uh, uh, th their federal benefits as far as what they're entitled to and things like this. I think we're doing the right thing. And I think Wenatchee as a whole in the central, central Washington area has been asking for more mental health uh, assistance. And I think that's because we've created a comfortable enough area for people to come forward and try and ask for that sort of help. Uh, places like here where the vets all where the other day they had 47 uh, veterans and friends down here having coffee and chewing the fat together. I mean, that, that's so impressive. And it's so impressive that even we have state folks wanting to come and see this and say, how are you guys doing this? Well, you know, it starts small and then we kind of, we have our camaraderie and brotherhood and sisterhood and then we talk about benefits. And, you know, this, this is not all run by the dollar, but at the same time, like, uh, the dollar kind of sometimes equivocates to, I see you, you know, I see your service, I see that you have an injury and we want to, you know, get that taken care of. And in the meantime, you know, we're just trying to uh, show that people still have a purpose. If we can uh, get our Iraq, Afghanistan veterans the help they need now, then we'll have a lifetime of them supporting and working in the communities, which is contrary to the Vietnam veterans who didn't have any help, and they just worked their tails off. And so we want to support a community that says, welcome home to the Vietnam veterans, and let's heal to the Iraq, Afghanistan young guys. And these are lessons that have been learned mm. by not only the Veterans Administration, but organizations like yours. Right. We can't make that mistake again. Yeah, we can't. We can't. We can't. It just, the, the cost is, is uh, um, you know, UW Forefront, the suicide prevention place, it, essentially the numbers are 130 lives are affected by every suicide. And that's a, it's a tremendous loss for the United States. And we, we have to do more. How much of it is, is, is pride, is vanity, is if I come to Tony or anybody say I'm really dealing with some issues related mm -hmm. to my service, but I feel like maybe that makes me a weaker man or a mm -hmm. weaker person. I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be strong and, right. and, and, and all that stuff. And they mm -hmm. just, they don't, they, they, they just can't reach out because they just, something stands in their way. Right, right. It, and you know, I do see that quite a bit, male, female. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's the military, um, the military trained them to be tough and not to say anything like this. Um, and so then when they, when they finally end up in our seat, it's, it's almost the end. And they say, 
you know, I see you. I see you where you're at. I, I walked these steps before. When I left Iraq, I don't remember the next eight years. That's just my life. And so dredging through that, learning from my mistakes and kind of moving forward, I've learned how to kind of connect with some people and just say, all right, all right, I'm not gonna do this for you. I'm gonna try and empower you and build you up, get, get you educated on the tools that you can use to get yourself out of this hole. But I'm here with you. The number one connection that you make with your potential clients uh, is I, I, I know, I was there. I'm a United States right. Army veteran. I, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not Joe Schmo. Right. I know exactly what you're going through. Right. And right. That, that's imp terribly important, isn't right. it? Right, right. And there, there used to be uh, the, the head of counseling and wellness, um, he used to say, all veterans are like, some veterans are like no other veteran. So everybody's story is unique. I, I can't tell you, after seven years, almost seven years at the end of this month, I've been doing this, and, uh, and everybody has their own unique kind of perspective or peace or injury that they carry. And so we say, hey, let's lay this stuff down. Let's work on it. And if you can get the VA to see it and you're allowed federal benefits, a criteria-based system, all the VA is, then, then we can move forward you know, into being um, you know, more, more fruitful in the community. And you, our viewers, you can help us. They have a really cool program that raised almost $11,000 last year mm -hmm. uh, with your license plate. We're going to show you the video real quick, but explain this program. How does this work? Right, so 988 is the national crisis uh, you know, hotline. And essentially, uh, the state of Washington Department of Veterans Affairs has created a 988 emblem to go over, I think, Evergreen State. At the very bottom plate. of your license That's plate. right, yeah. And so I think it's 18 to 99. Um, and, and that will go to programs like the program that, you know, uh, counseling and wellness uh, to help more veterans in the state of Washington. Tony uh, sent me a little video uh, to explain it uh, in detail, and here it is. Be a sign of hope for all those in need. Washington is home to over a half a million veterans. The Suicide Prevention Community-Based Grant Program funds organizations that provide suicide prevention, peer support, and community-based services. And we need your help. Become an ally in the fight against suicide by purchasing a 988 emblem today. All revenue goes directly to the Suicide Prevention Community-Based Grant, available at all Department of Licensing offices. Scan the QR code for information on how to get your emblem today. So that's one way you, the viewer, can help out uh, Tony and his organization. Other ways that uh, the general public can help you guys out uh, besides doing the license plate thing that you mm -hmm. just saw? There must be numerous things that we can do to help. You know, um, listen. Right, that's it. Observe. Right. When asked uh, how to fix the problem, then we say, well, what's the problem? And there's the multitude of problems on the federal, state, local, um, you know, traditional offices, things like this. And I think the problem is that we don't have enough people educated about the potential benefits. The state of Washington Department of Veterans Affairs offers not only benefits, but pensions available to wartime veterans, uh, our state homes, uh, they offer the license plate, uh, you know, th they have pr programs that help with fiduciary. Um, there's just a tremendous amount, dva.wa.gov. You'll see this, this website has got a tremendous amount of programs. Uh, veteran-owned businesses, things like this across the state of Washington. And really, the community can help to reintegrate uh, veterans by understanding and maybe not saying, oh, I get it, you know, I saw a video of Vietnam, but just saying, I don't understand your service specific, but I appreciate that you served. And, and you know, here's the programs that are available to help. And, and I think that what's really interesting is that we're not just working with the veteran specific, but the community. And every community member has a veteran, like your dad was a Korean War veteran, right? Yep. Every person carries with them some memory or maybe even some trauma from their relationship to a veteran. And I think well, if that, we educate ourselves, we all heal. You, you, you went in that direction, and I'm glad you did, because I meant to ask this. If, if you served in our military mm -hmm. and you were in combat in one way or the other, mm -hmm. Did, did, do you almost by definition have a, at least a minor case of PTSD? Is, is, mm. is anybody, who, everybody who saw contact, uh, saw combat, right. and saw men die or had to kill another human right. being, is that, right. is that just inherent? You're going to have a little bit of it whether you know it or not? Well, I think that, uh, you know, it's really, um, what I know about PTSD is that uh, it's a perceived threat. Um, I've talked to some military officers, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan, and then a lot of enlisted men and there is really a difference in the way they think. And so military officers go in, they train different, they think different, they're in a leadership position, and sometimes you know, they're less naive about what they're being thrown into, right? And I don't mean na naive as a, as, a, as a negative thing, it's just they, they know a little bit more going into things. So then the trauma is a little bit less specific, 
and, and their uh, perception of that is a little bit different, right? Um, being a young man that gets drafted into the U.S. Army and sent right into the jungle, that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, then, and then of course, excuse me, um, you know, coming out of Vietnam and not having uh, the support that, you know, veterans do now was just completely different. Um, there's, there's a multitude of, uh, of uh, PTSD type symptoms, um, you know, uh, agoraphobia or uh, hypervigilance, um, you know, panic attacks, things like this. And if anyone feels like they have something uh, that, it, that they're struggling with as far as the trauma goes, I would highly encourage them to seek help. Uh, mm -hmm. It is a difficult time to find good help and uh, you know, accurate hope uh, in following up, but at the same time, it's important. And I think what the state is really trying to do is offer more uh, certified peer counseling type trainings. I know our program is specifically to educate you and me more about how we can sit down with our brothers and sisters and say, I kind of understand what you're talking about. And there's, there's a huge family of support right, right here right. at the Veterans Hall in North Wenatchee Avenue. George mm -hmm. and, and his crew, awesome, awesome people. Absolutely. There's always a place to come yeah. and sit yep. and talk and have coffee. Mm -hmm. A couple more questions, we'll cut you loose. We mentioned in the previous interview we did up at the Alathena Writing Center, mentioned that immersion program one mm -hmm. more time right. because that's all part of what you're doing. You're thinking outside the box. Right. Mm -hmm. on how to on how to help veterans uh, right. talk about the event that Nancy's putting on right so uh, uh, Alethea Writing Center has long since been in Wenatchee and they're helping uh, special needs and things like this uh, EGALA the EGALA, EGALA model for uh, equine therapy has shown to have about a 70 percent alleviation of PTSD symptoms so it's pretty tremendous. I'd take 50%. Right, absolutely. <laughs> and so our program has said, hey, we're really noticing that equine therapy is, is very fruitful. So I've taken some great resources, Wenatchee Community Acupuncture, uh, an, an amazing veteran, Reuben Pine Jr., who's uh, seven summiteer Marine Corps, um, you know, and he does resilience training and stuff like this. And we paired them together in this sort of immersion program that we're inviting some specific veterans and what's different is, and it's not just about the veteran, it's also about the significant other. So that person that goes, hey, honey, this is, remember this and this, and may be able to retain some information while they might be in their trauma mode. So we're doing things like acupuncture, uh, breath sessions, uh, resilience training, um, substance abuse reduction, and, and EGALA, the, the equine therapy. And we're doing that in a weekend, trying to host a, a really good event where they can feel comfortable and, and do some learning. You've had this new job, we'll cut it, cut it loose with Tony Sandoval. You've had this new job for about, what, eight, nine months now? It's a little Something over like six, that? I think. A little think. over six months. Yeah. How, do you know, how do you know you're making an impact? How do you know you're, you're doing what, you have, you're, what your calling is? What's a good day for Tony? How do you know? Well, I think I have more gray hair, so that's, <laughs> that's the, the majority of it. But, um, you know, I feel like uh, we're getting more contacts and connection from the community saying, we see that you're out there and I appreciate it. Uh, whether it's veteran-based or whether it's the community, we're getting people calling and we're talking, and everyone is, has somebody in a family or a friend that's that's uh, gone the suicide route, and and they all want to start talking about this. So I think that trauma that's always hanging out in the backpack that you're carrying around, it's like, even if you're a, a civilian and you know just coming to us and saying, hey, I've had to deal with this, I see what your program's doing, out of boy, right? Um, and so let's educate the community about. Um, the signs and symptoms and get more people the help that they need. Tony Sandoval, uh, let's make this a regular regular deal, shall I we? I love it, yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, once a quarter we'll get we'll get caught up and find out how you're doing. Excellent, All thank that you. good stuff. Tony Sandoval, our good buddy. Uh, next time, Tony, just a quick heads up, don't wear that shirt. I know. It's cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere there's a Volkswagen without its seat cushions. Yeah. <laughs> you're watching Wake Up in Anchi Valley. We'll be right back. Snow piles up quickly. Remove it just as quickly with Kubota Compact and Utility Tractors. Rated number one in durability and owner experience, they're built to take on winter with front and rear mount snow blowers, blades, and rotary sweepers. Get select Kubota tractors for zero down, 2.99% APR for up to 84 months, plus save up to $800 on qualifying snow attachments. See your local Kubota dealer today. says thank you to our thousands of pizza loving friends from our first 60 years.
our family to yours. Thank you. This January, Abby's is proud to offer our classic Big Hawaiian pizza at a very special price. Order now at abbeys.com or join us in our parlor for a legendary pizza tradition. Since 1932, Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Coming home should never be a chore. Let Mary Maids of Wenatchee customize all your cleaning needs. Weekly, bi-weekly, special occasion. Do you have a vacation home that needs cleaning? We clean them too. Locally owned and operated, let Mary Maids do the cleaning while you focus on your family and friends. Mary Maids has special offers to fit your budget. Request your free cleaning estimate today. 509-663-1710. Pretty good looking shot from our Hay Candy and camera here on this Friday edition of Wake Up in Anchee Valley. Snow is all but stopped. I think we're done with it. <clears throat> now we start talking maybe a little bit of freezing rain, some mixed precipitation at times. Uh, this is not something we've been keeping secret from you. As you know by now, the cold Arctic air is already beginning to exit the region, but it's still cold enough and very warm and moist air up on top. And that's the scenario. You get warm, moist air at about uh, 5,000 feet or so. It starts falling as rain, and then it passes through the cold pockets of air trapped near the surface of the planet. It freezes, and then it hits the ground as freezing rain. That is still a possibility. We want to show you a couple more slides that we showed you at the start of the show just to give you an idea. So we do have a wintry mix through the day today, a possibility of it. The best chance, as you can see, is gonna be out in the Columbia Basin. There's gonna be that weird kind of transition, light snow over to freezing rain, and then maybe over to just plain rain in that big pink circle area there that just misses the Wenatchee Valley. But things could get a little dicey if you're heading out on I-90 in the Columbia Basin. Wanted to give you a little warning on that. And of course, when we talk about freezing rain, it cannot be ruled out. So, you know, just, it's, it's easy to know when it's freezing rain, you'll know it. And this is your freezing rain, that big yellow blotch. And obviously down in the Tri-Cities in the Walla Walla area in Lewiston, that's a real problem. And in the Cascades, you could find some freezing rain right at that level where the rain will turn into freezing rain. If you want to drive over the Cascades, please, ladies and gentlemen, use an automobile. It's just common sense. Snow is about done. We'll top off at about 28 degrees. It's 21 right now. 26 for the overnight low tonight. Nothing really happening. Pretty quiet on Saturday, just clouds and a high of 33. Look at the overnight low Saturday night, 32. That's all we're going to have for the temperature variation. Then things get interesting. 36 with a rain snow mix, 37 with a rain snow mix, 42 with a rain snow mix. That'll be nice after this cold weather. Have yourself a good weekend. Have yourself a great, safe weekend. We will see you Monday. Bye-bye. Greetings, North Central Washington, and welcome to another episode of Networked, your connection to the forefront of technology, innovation, and education in our region. While our regular beloved rock star host, Jenny, is out of town this week, I'm stepping in to keep her seat warm. I'm David Maybe, the Marketing Director of the NCW Tech Alliance, and I'm thrilled to navigate today's exploration of our digital landscape. In this riveting installment, we're privileged to introduce a guest who is reinventing the agricultural sector with a cutting-edge technology. Today we welcome Steve Mantle, the mastermind behind Innovate Ag.